So what we have here is the, uh, the storage area for the horn manure. Um, very cool uh, location here. And with the horn manure, which we also call preparation number 500, we use a, a female cow horn, which we then stuff with the manure into the horn, and then we bury right around um, autumn and let it set for roughly six months. So then we'll dig it back up right around the spring equinox when the day is right. And it's pretty amazing transformation because horn manure, um, with using manure as your starting material, we all know what that smells like. Um, what comes out of the ground six months later within this horn um, is definitely a much different material. Um, as you can see, it's no longer that typical sort of green color. It's a little bit more uh, brown. And it smells uh, sweet. It smells of the earth. It, this does not smell like the typical uh, cow patty that somebody probably stepped in a while back. Um, visiting a farm or anything like that. We know how that goes. Um, and the material is very compact. Um, so they actually come out in this sort of rounded form, if you will. And then we store them in this uh, crock or this urn kind of to maintain the moisture that's in there. We don't want it to get too dry. Um, the amphora and clay work very well because they're not perfectly um, impermeable. There actually is a little bit of exchange of oxygen and moisture that will move through this because it's not glazed on that sort of uh, um, technique. Um, with the horns, uh, just so you know, nobody kills a cow just for the horns. Um, they, they actually take the cow for, the, um, for food, for the meat, and then the horns are taken thereafter. And they do need to be um, from female cow horns, and the way that you can actually tell that is by the, uh, the stress or the lactation rings that are on these horns on the outside. A bull horn will be much, much smoother, whereas with these cow horns, you can actually see that there's some ridges going um, all the way around the horn. And what happens is during calving season, there's a bit of a stress on the animal, and she will actually express that in her horn. And when Rudolf Steiner put out his ideas with um, biodynamic farming, he made it very, very clear that it does need to be from a, a female cow horn. And, um, that's what we use here. So we obviously have a, a very good pile. Um, each one of these horns can f um, treat a uh, hectare, which is roughly 2.5 acres as we know them. And again, think of it as being with a, a sprinkle of yeast and 60 gallon barrel of juice. Um, that yeast will actually transform that entire barrel into wine. So think of this as being kind of like a yeast for your, for your soil for activating the, uh, the soil life forces, the vitality, and introducing some very um, powerful sort of um, catalysts to waking up the land to the, uh, to the season. And so we actually apply this right around springtime or a little bit thereafter, right when the world is kind of waking up in our area. You think of uh, summertime as being a very active and awake time and springtime as well when things are just sort of coming out of their sleep period, which is more or less the winter. And so um, that's uh, preparation number 500, the, the horn manure. And um, that's about it.